on, family, get close and cozy. All right, all right. Good job, good job. Okay, and if you also need a Bible, I need everyone to have a Bible day. We are going in, and I need everybody to have a Bible. Don't take my word for it. I'm like, oh, she sounds like she knows what she's talking about. No, read it for yourself. I'm not that convincing. Read, everybody have a Bible, or pull up your Bible app. Get your U version out. All right, I'm going to walk around. Y'all want me to do like the teacher, walk around, wear your Bible. I got glasses, too. I walk around with my... There it is. Thank you, Sister Rochelle. I see you. <laughs> no judgment if you don't. No pressure. There's no pressure, church. Sorry. All right. How many are ready for the word of God today? I'm sorry that uh, we are just going to... Y'all ready to have a good time in the Lord? Y'all ready to receive? You know, you didn't just get out of bed. You could have been watching a football game, made it through the cold. Just for something ordinary, how many are really expecting something from God? You need a word. Some of you woke up like, you know what, let me just go to church before I hurt somebody. Let me just get my mind right. So this is really like when you come to the house of God, come expecting. Like, God, I need a word from you. And guess what? It doesn't matter who's up here delivering the word. The word has power within itself. Do you believe that? All right, all right. We're going to open. We're going to read a a passage really quick. We're going to, if you could turn your Bibles to Mark. Mark 6. Mark 6. And we're going to start off. I'm just going to do the opening verses. We're going to start off with... um, Ooh, atmosphere, nice. (laughs) Ooh, all right. Um, If we could have that on, yeah, Mark 6, 49. Reading from the New Living Translation, so if you have a black Bible, it might not be the same, but it still has the same phraseology. All right, everybody there? Matthew 6, 49. All right, we are really going in depth. Y'all, y'all okay with that? We're gonna go in depth into the word today. You, y'all, y'all ready to go in with me? We deep dive. So I need you to stay with me. We go and tell your neighbor, stay with me, stay with me. All right. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Verse forty-nine. I'm trying to attempt this without my glasses because I want to look cute. All right. He saw, but when he saw, no, oh, yes, help Jesus. What verse am I at? Lord, let me just. <sighs> Getting old. <sighs> okay, here we go. Yeah. Woo, look at the difference, Lord. Y'all playing. Stop. Y'all going to get me fired. (laughs) All right. I'm actually, okay, you can put that verse back up. Verse 49. He saw that, oh, what did I do? Okay, we're going to read from here. But when they saw him walking on the water, they cried out in terror, thinking he was a ghost. They were talking about Jesus. They were all terrified when they saw him. But Jesus spoke to them at once. Do not be afraid, he said. Take courage. I am here. Then he climbed into the boat, and the wind stopped. And they were totally amazed. For they still didn't understand the significance of the miracle of the loaves. Their hearts were too hard to take it in. Today we're going to talk about Understanding the loaves. Understanding the loaves. So God, we just want to bless you for this time. Thank you for this opportunity to read and hear your word. Thank you for the freedom to congregate and gather. Lord, we pray that you would do an amazing thing. We have people who need a touch and encounter to hear a word from you in their situations. God, let your word come alive. 
God, I pray that it would reach down into the very crevices of our hearts and do the work that only it can do. Bless our time together. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Uh, is there anyone in here like me that likes bread? Do you enjoy bread? I'm, you know, I'm kind of glad that that I see you. Uh, I'm kind of glad that that whole, what was that carb thing a few years ago? Remember that was like no carbs diet? I'm, is, still, is that still a thing? Because I was kind of happy that it was gone, right? But the bread, like how? I love it. Does anyone else have this, like, let it be sweet and soft and more. Oh, bread. You know, it was the, that felt like that. What was that? The carb diet? That was the enemy coming against us. Jesus is the bread of life. How you going to take my, my bread away from me? So good. I know I'm in the right audience. You know, we're going to be talking about the miracle of the loaves today. And I saw this, this funny little comic strip that if this was to happen today, 2018 in Berkeley, Jesus is handing out the things, and one person's like, I can't eat that, I'm a vegan. <laughs> Other person's like, has that fish been tested for mercury? Other person's like, is that gluten-free bread, Jesus? If we were to do that today in Berkeley, Jesus would have got a little pushback, right? But we're here, we want to talk about um, this miracle of the, of the loaves. We want to understand the loaves. All right, before we leave this situation, before we leave this room, we want to understand it. Tell your neighbor, do you understand the loaves? Tell them, do you understand the loaves? Talk to the other one that you totally ignored just now. Tell them, do you understand the loaves? Do you understand the loaves? Good, honest answers. All right, before we dive into that particular question, I want to walk us through a passage of scripture. That's why I want you to do hang in there with me. We're going to um, actually open our Bibles to Mark 6. And we're going to start at verse 30. Mark 6, verse 30. I know it looks a lot up there. Don't worry. Just follow with me. All right? Mark 6, 30. We're just going to walk down some scripture, and then we're going to get into the meat of the matter. Is that okay with everyone? I want you to lock in. Don't drift. Stay here with us. All right? Um, I'm going to put on my apparatuses. <laughs> All right. Um, starting at uh, verse 30. The apostles returned to Jesus from their ministry tour. Look at the apostles on tour. And they told him all that they had done and taught. Jesus said, let's go off by ourselves to a quiet place and rest a while. I need to stop here for a minute for all the workaholics in the room. Anybody a self-identified workaholic, don't be ashamed. Your brothers and sisters are among you. And then how many of our, us procrastinators, like, we don't understand you at all? <laughs> <laughs> For those who are workaholics that feel like you just cannot stop, you got that T-shirt, hustle, grind, pray. Like, you, that's all you do. No sleep, team, no sleep. I want you to take a look at the words of Jesus. Even after they had gone out and did all these exploits, Jesus was like, okay, that's cool, you did all that great stuff. Come on, let's go, let's go take a vacation. Can you imagine that vacation with Jesus? They went out, I was like, okay, Jesus, what are we doing? Spy package? Take a vacation. So he said this because there were so many people coming and going that Jesus and his apostles didn't even have time to eat. Anybody been there before? You look up in the whole day, you be like, wait, wait, what? Did I eat? Wondering why you got a headache, wondering why you... This is why they were going, they were coming, they were busy, they were in ministry. You know, a lot of times we think, even if I'm working for Jesus, I'm just going to keep on going. That ain't true. Jesus wants you to always develop a rhythm of work and rest. Come on, take that home with you. A rhythm of working and a rhythm of resting. Not laziness and procrastination. That's a whole nother sermon. So bookmark that. But rhythm and resting. Okay, so verse 32. So they, they left by boat for a quiet place where they could be alone. Sounds amazing, right? Nice little vacation, quiet, no people. 
And then verse 37, but many people recognized them and saw them leaving. And the people from many towns ran ahead along the shore and, and got ahead of them. And Jesus saw the huge crowd as he stepped from the boat. Stop right there. What would have been your reaction <laughs> after you stepped from the boat? This is all the people you just tried to get away from. And they followed you. They, I mean, they were like TMZ. They were running paparazzi. They met him. And as soon as he steps off the boat, instead of being annoyed and irritated, and oh my gosh, these people, gosh, you can't get a break. Instead, he had compassion on them. Isn't what don't we serve a wonderful savior? He looked at them and and had like, oh my god, y'all went through all this trouble to come see me? Wow. He went through all that and and he had compassion on them. And he said they were like sheep without a shepherd. Isn't that amazing? Sheep without a shepherd. You know, sheep are the most defenseless animal that there is. They have absolutely no way of defending themselves. They wander, they get lost, they need someone to lead them. They need someone to lead them to where to feed. They'll just wander off and get eaten by predators. And he saw them as sheep without a shepherd. And he said, he began to teach them many things. How many need the Lord to teach you? Say, Lord, Lord, teach me. Come on, pat yourself. Teach me, Lord. Teach me many things. He had compassion on it. And you know, I just want to stop and let you know that the Lord, is he has compassion on you also. You might be looking at your situation like, God, really? Like what? You might feel like nobody cares, nobody, not, not really feeling what you're going through. This word is for you. The Lord is, he has compassion on you. He has a wonderful heart and loving kindness for, for, for you. And he wants to teach you many things. So let's keep going. Late in the afternoon, his disciples came to him. And they said, you know, uh, check this out, Jesus. This is a remote place. And it's already getting late. So um, send the crowds away. So that they can go to the nearby farms and villages and get them something to eat. Because that's really not our problem. So the disciples are trying to push. Like, hey, is, look at the time. Wow, it's getting late. Jesus, we got all these people here. They ain't got no food. We ain't got no food. So, you know, let's do the benediction. <laughs> all right, y'all. And then Jesus says that very interesting thing. He's like, well, what does he say? Y'all can read it. He said, you feed them. Interesting. This reminds me so much of us. Have you ever had a friend who was in trouble or, you know, going through a tough time or had a prayer request and the first is like, oh, no problem, right? I'm going to connect you to my pastor. Oh, nobody, you, I got a prayer group. I'm going to send you to my prayer group and it's going to be all good. You know what? Why don't you come to church with me? 10 o'clock on Sunday, and it'll be, just come with me to church. But see, we kind of do the same things. People have a need, and we kind of push them on somebody else. Okay, well, they, they the ones that pray, so I'm going to send you, let's come to church. You'll really love the, the, the music. The music will set you free. But Jesus is saying to us in this hour, you know what? For every friend and every problem in your life, I want you to feed them. I want you to feed them. I want you to give them words. I want you to pray for them. I want you to call them. I want you to follow up with them. Jesus, and that same reaction that we just had, like, oh, me? Wait, huh? That's the same reaction the disciples had. They said in verse 37, um, Jesus, with what? They said, we have to work for months to earn enough money to buy food for all these people. So they're, they're, like, thinking of the impossible. Like, you know, they had a point. Like, there's a lot of people, like, where we just supposed to go and, like, go to McDonald's and get everybody something. Like, who funding that bill? <laughs> and then Jesus said, look at this, very interesting. Verse um, 38, it says, Jesus said, how much bread do you have? Go find out. And they came back and reported, we have five loaves of fish and two uh, five loaves of bread and two fish. Now, do you really think that Jesus didn't know how much they had? 
Do you think Jesus really needs to like, oh, I, oops, my antenna a little off. Can y'all see how much we got? Do you really think God, that Jesus needed for them to count for them, for him? Very important. Whenever God asks a question, it's never for him. It's for us. He wanted to see. Okay, what you working with? What you, what you, what you got? Because when he asks a question, it shows us how little we have. they like, hey, we only got like little, little bread, a couple little, little fridge. We, ain't, we don't got much. He's like, oh, that's all you got? So are you aware that that's all you have? Just want to make sure that you know you only got a little bit. You only got a little bit? It seems impossible, huh? Uh-huh. Oh, okay. okay, watch this. He says, then, um, then Jesus told the disciples, have the people sit down on the grass, and they all sat down in groups by 50 and 100. 41, Jesus took the five loaves and the two fish, looked up toward heaven, and blessed them. Then breaking the loaves into pieces, he gave he kept giving bread. He kept giving the bread. He kept giving the bread to the disciples so that they could distribute it to the people. So Jesus broke it. He gave it. And then they gave it. Right? He also divided the fish for everyone to share. And they all ate how much? As much as they wanted. Can I just add a little pinpoint right here? This is not even in the, this is not even what we're talking about, but can I just say that only Jesus satisfies? <laughs> only he satisfies. Only he can give you all you ever need or want. He can only fill you up till you want more. You know the part about uh, the, our human nature is that we can never have enough. You notice that? Like you got the car, you got, I still need more shoes. Anybody got shoes? I got lots of, anybody got lots of shoes? Got lots of shoes, but I need more. I got a cool little apartment, but I want a five-bedroom house. Like, if, you don't, if we don't check our nature, we'll always want and desire more, and that want and desire will never be filled. It's a vacuum. It's an empty hole. It's, you know, it's, it's never filled. You'll never be filled. But only Jesus can satisfy to the feel, to you don't even want nothing. Else. Like, I'm, I'm good. You good? I'm full. I don't need nothing else. You ever, anybody, I don't know, I'm on a, a side trail, but have you ever been so filled up with Jesus that you really don't want the old stuff that you wanted? Like, you used to, like, be like, everybody, man, we down with it. What we doing? But when you get filled up with Jesus, it's like, you know, I'm, I'm good. I really don't need to call you anymore because I'm feeling good. Only Jesus satisfies. All right? And then afterward, the disciples picked up 12 baskets, 12 baskets left over of bread, total of 5,000 men and their families were fed. So figure, do the math, 5,000 people, and then they probably had wife, kids. We're looking at almost 10,000 people that were fed from how many fish and how many pieces of bread? Jesus out here handing out filet of fish meals, right? <laughs> Just having a whole filet of fish throughout the countryside. He had enough left. So that's another thing. He satisfies, and he's always got more for you. He will satisfy you. And he will always give you more. Now, we're about to get into the meat of it. Everybody got that miracle. Let's keep walking. Y'all with me? Y'all not tired of reading yet? Reading is fundamental. All right. Time for these. Immediately, when did this happen? Immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and head across the lake to Bethsaida. Um, while he sent the people home. So where did he tell them to go? He told them, get on the boat, and y'all go ahead. They was probably like, um, what about you, Jesus? What we, y'all go ahead. I'll be there. Don't worry. I'm going to get it. You know, I got a friend. I'm going to get a ride. Don't worry. <laughs> y'all go ahead. So he sends them out. After telling everyone goodbye, he went up to the hillside by himself to pray. That was really, that really touched me. 
There's over 5,000 people, maybe potentially 10,000. Jesus, you took time to say bye? Because he could have just been like, goodbye, everyone, and floated off on the boat. Like, <laughs> it was a pleasure. That's just like going to your favorite concert and the, the artist lines up to say bye to everybody. You know people are trying to probably get in free healings. Like, hey, Jesus, you know, can you touch my shoulder real quick? <laughs> right? They was trying to get in free stuff on Jesus. He said goodbye to everyone, which also speaks to his personal nature. Jesus is personal. He's not a diva. He's not trying to just do, you know, be all puffed up and, you know, he could have floated away in the sky. <laughs> but he's a personal, personal savior. Now let's check. This is where the drama starts happening. Late that night, the disciples were in their boats in the middle of the lake, and Jesus was alone on the land. He saw. What did he say? He saw. He saw that they were in serious trouble, rowing hard and struggling against the wind and the waves. I mean, they was just a going, just rowing and rowing. And he's noticed that he saw it. He was way on the mountainside, but he saw it. Can I remind you that Jesus sees you? He sees your struggles. Someone needs to hear that today. He sees it. He sees it. He sees it, and they're just rowing. Now, remember, who told them to go across the lake? Who told them to get in the boat? So they're only in this position because Jesus commanded them to get in the boat. Jesus told them to go, to get in the boat. Had Jesus ever told you to do anything and you met resistance? Sometimes Jesus, just because Jesus gives you the go-ahead, it doesn't mean that everything's going to be rosy and it's just going to be a clear path. You need to hear this. Sometimes the way God paves is going to be met with resistance. They went and they're just struggling and they're just rowing. And it says about 3 o'clock in the morning. For all of us insomniacs, when does your mind race the most usually? Usually it's for me about 3 or 4 in the morning when you feel like you still got a good couple of good more hours, but it's too early to wake up. Anybody with me? That's when the wind starts blowing in your mind. Anyone experience it? That's usually when all the turmoil starts happening. The waves start kicking up in your mind about 3, three or 4 in the morning. He, he sees them. And I love this part. Jesus came walking towards them on the water. This is my favorite line right here. He intended to pass them. Yo, do you, I, I feel like Jesus has a sense of humor. Anybody else? Like, I feel like Jesus is a, like a funny guy. He had to have a great personality for so many people. Like, no one wants to be around somebody nasty, mean, and sour, right? For all these people to, oh, there's Jesus, and follow him, he had to be like a fun guy. He intended to pass him by. I don't know what the Lord, was he like, I'm going to meet y'all there and be like on the shore like, da-da, like, <laughs> or was he like doing the neon, the Dion, like, was he like walking by him, or was he like moonwalking, like, yup, I don't know. It sounds amazing to me. It sounds very funny that he saw them struggling, and he's just like, almost about to pass them by. That's amazing. I don't know. I have a weird sense of humor. But when they saw him walking on the water, they cried out in terror, thinking that he was a ghost. I don't know if all you, how many saints, I don't, I'm not going to actually raise your hand. Some people enjoy scary movies. That's not my anointing. I don't like to be scared. But some people enjoy it. Now, there's no common condemnation for you. You go ahead. Just don't invite me to go with you because at night I hear things and things come back. So they saw Jesus. Can you imagine this? You know, we got to cut them a break. Like, this is happening for them in real time. Jesus is coming out of nowhere, walking on the water. They're like, wait, what? I mean, they didn't even recognize who he was. He's just coming and chilling. And you, they really were terrified. They thought, it, he, they thought he was a ghost. And with 
think of the worst scary movies. If you see something just coming at you, you like, wait, hold on. You stuck in water, nowhere to run. Come on, we gotta feel their pain. And they cried out in terror, thinking it was a ghost. All they were all terrified when they saw him. But Jesus spoke to them at once. He said, Don't be afraid. He said, Take courage. I am him. I am here. Then they climbed into the boat and the wind stopped. I always wonder why he didn't just float in the boat or do something like he climbed. He took the time to climb into the boat and the wind stopped. Once he got into the boat, the wind stopped. They were totally amazed, for they still didn't understand the significance of the miracle of the loaves. Their hearts were too hard to take it in. It's very strange that they would add at the end of this boating crisis, by the way, they didn't understand the loaves. Don't you find that interesting? At the end of the boating situation, they could have been like, and Jesus got on the boat, the end. But they made a very important point that once Jesus got in the boat, that they were amazed because somehow they still didn't understand the significance of the loaves. Think about this. That's a very unique thing to put at the end of this verse, which says to me, that if they had understood the loaves, they would have been able to better navigate the storm a little better, which implies that you need to understand the loaves to make it through the storms in your life. Because if they had got the lesson, this whole little boating situation would have been a whole nother thing. But somehow they didn't get to let they didn't get the lesson. You know, sometimes they're like us. We don't always get the lessons. They're a little slow on the uptake. They didn't quite get it. So let's, let's, let's look at what are some of the lessons from the loaves. And we are almost done. Let's look at some lessons from the loaves. We're going to go to the first one. What are some lessons that we can learn? How can we understand the loaves? First thing you need to know. Our own resources are never, ever enough. What you have in your hand and what you work for in your own strength will never be enough to sustain you. Remember when they came with the little fish in the, in the bread? Not enough to feed five. That's impossible. What are you holding in your hand today? What do you have to give to God? You say, God, I got all this desire and this purpose, but I ain't got no money. I want to start a business, but no building. I want to do all these great things. I really don't have much. What's in your hand? What seems small to you? And then look at them. They were in their own strength. Boy, they were just rowing and toiling and working against the resistance. It was never enough. Remember, what we hold, even if it sustains you for a little bit, will never be enough. That's our first lesson from the loaves. What has Jesus told you to do that is meeting resistance? What is something you're like, no, I know I heard God. I know I was supposed to go to school. I don't know why my financial aid not working out. I know I was supposed to, I know I was supposed to take this job. Why this boss acting up? I know this is the person I was supposed to marry, but they acting up. When you, what are you meeting resistance? You know, a lot of resistance is not always evil. It's to build muscle. <laughs> Remember resistance training? They came out with these little rubber bands, and all the athletes was like, well, I, was about, I need weight. They was like, no, no. The more you resist, the stronger you get. Lesson two from the loaves. I am conquers fear. I am conquers fear. Do you remember in the story when Jesus finally got to them on the boat? They were all scared and terrified. And as soon as he got to the boat, 
He said, hey, don't be afraid. Take courage. I'm here. The same language that God used with Moses to say that I am, that I am. Everything you need, he is. He is the I am in every situation. You need more bread, he is the bread. You need more, whatever you need, he is there for you. Just think, for a, for a baker, that would have been amazing. Like, oh my gosh, she did so many loaves. For fishermen, for someone to walk on water in their line of work, that's amazing. Jesus will reveal himself to you in a way that you can understand it. He will come down your aisle. He will conquer your fears. Now, look, it didn't, the wind didn't stop until he what? Come on. Can we let Jesus into our boat today? Will you let him into your boat? Because a lot of times we're like, no, Jesus, I got it. I'm rowing. Woo! I got it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to work it out. Let Jesus into your boat. That's the only time when the wind ceased, which means that there was peace. Remember, we talked about peace earlier. There is a peace that passes all understanding. Jesus said, that's the peace that I give you, a peace that no man can give you. Have you ever experienced this? Some people in here need to experience this peace because you're looking for it in other stuff. You're looking for it in people and substances and friends. At the bar, you're hanging out, you're on social media. Nothing is going to give you the peace that God can give you. And once you experience it, there's nothing like it. Nothing else satisfies. Nothing else satisfies. And if you have not experienced this peace, this is why you're here today. You say, God, I need this. Whatever she's talking about, I want it. Because it is the I am that conquers fear. What were they scared of? With the, with the, with the food, we ain't got enough. You know, I was just sending them away. We, we, well, how are we going to feed these people? Scared of lack. What were they scared of in the boat? They were scared of a ghost. They thought Jesus was a ghost. They were seeing stuff. They, they were, thought they, they potentially could drown. Scared. But once Jesus gets in your boat, I am that I am conquers all fear. Jesus said so many times, I think someone said, he said 365 times, do not fear. If you looked at, if you did a word study, that's one word for every day of the year. Do not fear. Do not fear. Someone needs to hear this today. God is speaking to you, to your situation. He's telling you, do not fear. Stop worrying. Stop thinking you're going to die. I got you. Do not fear. If you understood the loaves, you'll understand who he is and that you won't ever have to worry. You don't ever have to fear. You never have to fear lack or you never have to fear, you know, we go through things and some things are a process. And that's the part we don't like. Because God doesn't show up like we want him to. So we're like, oh, forget it. God take it too long. Right? This is a time for you just to steady in and say, you know what? God, I trust you. I don't know how this is going to work out. But I know that you're the God of the loaves. Let's keep going. The next lesson from the loaves is same God, same power. Same God, same power. Although they had seen his power in the feeding of the 5,000, they did not understand that that same power was available to them. Think about it. They just saw a miracle. They did not remember to call to mind the power which Jesus shown in the feeding of the 5,000 by a miracle. It's the same power that can help them in the storm. They didn't put the two together. This is why Jesus said in that boat, the Bible says in the boat, they didn't remember the loaves. The same power 
that Jesus used to feed the multitudes is the same power that can help you in your personal crisis. So this is what you have to do. You need to remember your loaves. When was the last time God came through for you? When did he show up for you in a real way? When did you have an encounter with God? Sometimes we have spiritual amnesia. So last year, God took care of your financial aid and everything was straight. You made it through. This year, oh, Lord, what I'm going to do? Just a few months ago, your rent got paid. You don't know where it's going to come from. This month, you worry. You don't know what. You're nervous. I don't know what I'm going to do. Last year, he healed you. This year, you're getting another doctor's report, and you're all out of your, out of your mind. It's the same God, same power. Call to mind what he's done for you before. What did he do for you before? Sometimes we got to take it back down memory lane. Remember God, remember, oh, yeah, you did come through. Oh, yeah, you always made a way. So when a new problem arises, remember the loaves. He's the same God. Y'all with me? Y'all understand? He's the same God. We used to sing that song, same power, same God, same power. The same, just like the same resurrection power that raised Jesus from the dead is available and living inside of you. Did you know that? Same power. Living in it, but we don't, we don't tap into that power. And then we wonder why we live in defeated and live. Can you imagine if you tapped into resurrection power to conquer dead things in your life, to rise from dead things in your life? It's the same power. Same power, same God, same power. The next one, our next lesson from the loaves is um, being, our next one, being impressed with God doesn't equal belief in him. And everybody, please hear and understand this. The disciples walked with Jesus. They literally saw him face to face, hung out with him. They could touch him, shake his hand. He did all these miracles. They were wowed, wow, amazed. But their hearts were still hardened. Think about this. The disciples are still trying to figure this guy out. All right, you the Messiah. We're going to see. You the Messiah. Maybe he is. Maybe he not. Just like we're still trying to figure out who Jesus is. God, are you real? Did you, are you really a real thing? Or is it, I don't know, I'm still trying to figure you out. Ever met somebody who had a r miraculous story, like they almost got hit, they dived out of a car, it was on fire, it blew up. And then they come back and be like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe you're alive. And they're like, yeah, there's like a higher power or, you know, I was just lucky. You're like, what? <laughs> you're like, you think that was luck? You are here for a purpose and God loves you. But they're like, oh, I'm just lucky. I don't know. I'm just grateful, you know, to be here. Just because God does miraculous things, it doesn't always lead to belief. We got to be careful of that. Sometimes we're asking God, God, I need a sign. I need you to just, okay, first I need you to rain down this, and then they're like, okay, if my neighbor car is there, then that means yes, but if they're not, then that means no. Like, we got all these signs. And then when God does it for it, we still excusing it away. Ah, well, okay, maybe, maybe not. Being impressed with God doesn't matter much. It's your belief in him. You know, when, when, you know when the disciples finally got it? When they started putting it into practice in their life. Like when they, when they got in that storm, if they would have been like, oh, dude, 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 who, hey, the guy who did the loaves, come on, we need some of that right here. When you put 
it into practice. No, I really do trust this God. I'm in a tight spot, but let me sit down and pray somewhere. God, I trust you. That's when you put it into practice. It's not just a said faith. It's not just, yeah, I profess them, but it's deep down inside. You're walking it out. Do not just be impressed with God. Actually believe what he says. And this is our last point. I want you to know in here that we're on a journey. And I want you to know that Jesus is so patient with us on this spiritual journey. You know, we come in here a lot of times and we're beating ourselves up like, dang, you messed up again this week. Oh, if I could only get it right. Why am I so, you know, we're so hard on ourselves. And, it, you know, we don't, we're not this hard on, like, a toddler when they're learning how to walk. We're not like, oh, my gosh, you really can't get this together? <laughs> it's lit, walk. It's not that hard. Why are you falling down? Like, we're not this hard on things that are growing, things that are learning. So we're learning to be disciples. We're learning to follow God. And I'm, I'm going to give you an example of this. If, if those who still have your Bibles on my should have walked. Y'all still got your Bible? Mm, app still up. Thank you. All right. I want you guys to see this real quick. Turn to Mark 8. These guys, I tell you, the disciples, we are just like them. It's so easy to look at them and be like, what? We are just like, turn to Mark 8 real quick. This is quite hilarious. So in Mark 8, which is a couple of chapters away from Mark 6, uh, Jesus, in verse 1, Jesus feeds the crowd of 4,000. All right? Everybody see it? Oh, thank you. Oh, look at you. We almost there. Go on, brother. Long chapter. You there, Dad? Thank you. This is all off cuff. Everybody say thank you to Brother Mike. He's an E great. He never gets any shine back there. <laughs> Just working for the Lord. All right, check this out. About this time, another large crowd gathered. Another large crowd. And people ran out of food again. Surprise, surprise. And Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I feel sorry for these people. They have been with me for three days and have nothing to eat. If I send them home hungry, they will faint along the way. For some have come a long distance. Look how much Jesus cares. Doesn't he care? And his disciples said once again, how are we supposed to feed and find enough food to feed these people out here in this wilderness? Really, guys? Y'all don't... Y'all don't remember at all? Well, that, how are we supposed to feed them? And, you know, Jesus plays along with him like, what did Jesus say? How much bread do you have? Do we really got to go through this again? We, let's go through the same routine. All right. How much bread do you have? And if you, if you keep following this chapter, you should really read it on your own. He does the same thing. I think what Jesus was looking for, what do you think the, the answer Jesus was looking for? If you did it before, you can do it again. God, oh, this is going to be awesome. Guys, he's going to do the thing again. Come on, everybody, gather around. Hey, hey, what y'all got? What y'all got? Watch, he's going to do it. This is going to be amazing. If he did it before, he can do it again. Anybody know that Thai Tribute record? You should download it. It's amazing. Play it on repeat. This is understanding the miracle of the loaves. If God did it before, he can do it again. So instead of us laughing at the disciples, the next time you find yourself in lack or the next time you find yourself in resistance, what is your reaction going to be? Oh, Lord, what are we going to do? I done ran out. I don't know what to do, Lord. This always happened. and I'll Because that's kind of like what the disciples did. I don't know where we're going to get this from. Or is your reaction going to be, you know, God, you did it before. I know you can do it again. I know you can do it again. I know you can. This is understanding the loaves. Understanding the loaves. Look at Jesus. If you, even if you read through the Old Testament, God is always trying to show himself to his people. He was always trying to tell him, like, guys, I'm the Messiah. I'm literally God. Who else can walk on water? Do you guys, 
Do I need to give you anything else? He's always trying to prove himself to you. He's always trying to prove himself to you. He's always trying to reveal himself to you. What are you going to do with this information when he gets it to you? What are you going to do with it? Do I have another slide? Yes. Is there one more after that? No. When God reveals himself to you, don't harden your heart. Or, or we could take that off for just one second. When he reveals himself, just like he reveals himself to the disciples, don't harden your heart. He is trying to show you that he is God. Are you listening? Are you paying attention? Or are you just dismissing it? Oh, yeah, that's good. That's luck, coincidence, happenstance. He's talking to you today. He's revealing himself to you. Do not harden your heart. All right, ready for the questions. Some questions that we need to ask ourselves. What are the loaves that you need to understand in your life? What has God done for you? What has he brought you from? What provisions has he made for you in the past that you need to remember? Before you complain and before you panic and before you cry out and before you're terrified, be like, oh, wait, 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 wait. This happened last year, and I'm still here. I'm still alive. What are the loaves in your life? Also, how has Jesus fed you when you've been spiritually hungry lately? See, the source is very important. How has Jesus fed you? Have you allowed him to feed you? Or are you turning to other sources when you get hungry? When you get spiritually hungry, are you reaching for other things other than God? Because only he satisfies. Better than a snicker. <laughs> only he satisfies. What situation in your life do you need to hear Jesus' words? Don't be afraid. Come on, think about what are you scared of running out of? What, are, what is resisting you? What winds are blowing you to and fro? What's keeping you up at night at 3 in the morning? I feel with all my heart that people in here need to hear Jesus say to you, don't be afraid. It's me. Take courage. He's like, hey, y'all, y'all cheer up. It's me. Stop being scared. Hey, me, Jesus. Ta-da. Same thing Jesus is doing in your life. He's like, hey, no matter what's going on, no matter what storms are blowing, no matter what lack or resistance, hey, it's me. I'm here. Let me in your boat. He climb, he'll climb up in there with you. What do you got going on in here? All right. And the winds of, of torment, the winds of anxiety, the winds of stress, the winds will cease. Peace be still. <laughs> Lastly, what in your life needs to be softened? Come on, think about this. Jesus did all these works. Even if you read on your own, read Mark 8. And Jesus keeps dialoguing with them like, don't you understand? Don't you understand? Do you understand the loaves? Do you understand who I am? Do you understand who is standing before you? Do you understand who lives inside of you? Because if you really understood, you wouldn't be afraid. If you really understood, you wouldn't be terrorized and scared and ah, filled with horror. You really, now so what needs to be softened? Think about it. Think about your life right now. 
Is it your heart? Have you been disappointed too many times? Be like, hmm, nope, not, not setting me up, not doing it. Let God soften that area. It's just like a, you know, I don't know, we don't, not an agricultural, you know, we're city people, but maybe some of you came from farm, farming. But, you know, if you ever were going to plant something, you can't just throw some seed on hard soil. The birds will come and eat it or it just won't do what it's accomplished to do. In order to be a proper crop and get yield as abundant, that, that, that soil has to be pliable. It has to be, you know, wet and has to be able to receive the, the seed. So what does God need to soften in your life? Is it your mind? Is it your heart? Do you need to really open yourself to be like, you know what, God? I'm going to take a risk. Look, this is all I got. I got these little fish and this little bread. But I believe that you can take my life and multiply it. Now, I'm not talking about financial stuff, because we get real happy. If I say, like, God's going to send you a check. He's going to multiply you. And yo, we'd be like, yes! <laughs> I ain't going to set you up like that, because God... God works in processes, just like we are, our theme this year is creating, right? God oftentimes is creating a miracle in your life. He's creating it, but he has to set it up. Just like everybody likes to go to the movies, no one wants the end of the plot right when the, right when the, the, the movie starts, like, oh, all right. Sometimes you need the setup. They have to tell the storyline. They got to see, you got to see trouble. You got to see a need. You got to see, like, why is he going to rescue this person? God is creating a miracle in your life, but you got to let him set it up. Sometimes he's doing stuff just for you to see that can't nobody do it but him. His no, he'll set you up. Because a lot of times, if it just comes to you easy, you're like, oh, yeah, they gave me the money, so, yeah, that was good. Or that just all worked out. Ooh, Jesus, he will back you into a corner. <laughs> and you'll be like, well, I don't really got no other options. And that's where he'll come in. And guess what? All the glory belongs to you. He'll get all the glory. You'll say, all the glory belongs to you, God. He just wants the glory out of our lives. So, if you don't take anything else away from this message, remember the loaves. Come on, tell yourself, say, remember the loaves. I want you to leave out of here saying, I remember the loaves. When you get into a hard time, you get into a, a crisis, you get into a storm, don't harden your heart. Don't say, oh, here we go again. Stuff always happened to me. Hey, no, 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 no. I'm going to remember. I'm going to remember that I serve a God who is sovereign over elements. He could do anything. So I'm going to choose. It's going to, um, can I just be honest? It's going to be uncomfortable. See, a lot of times we just preach all this and we think it's going to be amazing and none of this is at home. It's going to be uncomfortable because we're not used to sitting and waiting. I'm just going to be still. I, I cannot be still. Y'all don't watch me go back and forth this whole time. I have a hard time being still. So spiritually, I have to be like, okay, God, I'm just going to wait. It's going to be hard. It's going to be uncomfortable. But if you hold on, he will satisfy. You will have baskets left over of satisfaction. Only he satisfies. Only he satisfies. So let's everyone stand. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for listening. You're doing good on time. We want to close in prayer. We want to have a time for you to reflect, for you to respond to the word. It's so important to always have a way to respond to the word. And maybe you are here today and you hear this word and you're like, wow, this Jesus sounds amazing. I, I won't end on this. I don't know this Jesus. All I've known is church, or I've never, never been to church. 
If there's really a God who could give me peace, who can show me love, who can satisfy this hole in my heart, in my, in my mind, I want that. So we're going to give people opportunity today. If everyone could just bow your heads because we just want a time for you to reflect and you could have time just between you and God. You don't have to worry about your neighbor. Nobody's looking at you. Think about this. Do you know this God? Do you know Jesus for yourself? Are you more than just impressed with him? Oh, yeah, God, yeah, Jesus is a great man. I love reading about him. He's great. But have you put your hope and your trust and your belief in him? If you haven't, I want to give you an opportunity today. If you've never asked Jesus into your heart or into your life, I want you to repeat this simple prayer after me. Just repeat it in your heart or you can say it out loud. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I want you in my life. I need your peace, I need your love, and I need your joy. Forgive me of all my sins. I invite you into my life. I trust you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for forgiving me of my sins and giving me new life, a resurrected life in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, my friend, if you have said this prayer, then I want you to take courage. I want you to take heart that you don't have to be afraid anymore. That Jesus lives inside of you. That same power that resides in everything we've read about, that same power is now available to you. And if you're here and you want, you just need to pray with somebody. you like, you know what? I'm going through. This wind is kicking my butt. <laughs> I am tired. I'm tired of striving. I'm tired of lack. I'm tired of not having enough. And I just need someone to pray with me. Or maybe you just have a special prayer request and you just have something on your heart. You just want somebody to touch and agree with you. We have... Um, people here who are able to pray with you and for the rest of us can we just take a moment just to while you're in your seats and people are getting prayed for just reflect on the Lord just begin to think about your loaves begin to take a trip down memory lane of everything God has done for you and say God I remember I will remember the loaves I will remember the loaves do we have any other? To the depths of my soul, we say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Completely yes. Thank you. Yes. Yep. My soul, my soul, Lord, said yes. We have a Tell few more. Tell the Lord yesterday, say yes, yes Lord. Tell him yes, say yes, Lord, from the bottom of my heart, from the bottom of my heart, to the depth, to the depths of my soul, my soul will say yes, Lord, completely yes, yes, completely yes, say my soul. Yesterday, say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, oh, oh. yes, Lord. God, I give it all to you from the bottom of my heart to the very depths of my heart. you're here and you're in the audience and you need to have an encounter with God 
This is for everyone. If you need to have an encounter with God, I need you to lift your hands right now in the presence of the Lord and say, I want you to pray for yourself. Say, God, I need to encounter you in a new and a living way. God, I want to know you. I want to I want to experience your peace. I want to experience your joy like never before. Some of us need to feel the love of God. Come on, lift your hands and begin to worship him as we sing this song and say, God, it's me. I want to encounter you. Come on, take time to just reflect and pray to God. Come on, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Tell the Lord yes. Soften my heart, yes, Jesus. Lord. Some of us need our hearts softened. God soft in my heart. Thank you, Jesus. Let me not have a hard heart towards you. Yes, Lord. Completely yes. My soul, my soul says yes. I love you. Let's worship God. Spend some time with Him. Spend some time thinking about Him. From the bottom of my heart to the depths of my soul, I love you. Yes, God. I really do. My soul. So I just want to pray over us. God, we just want you more. God, we pray that you would just remove the hardness from our hearts. Lord, if you, Lord, just we need a softening in our hearts, Lord. When you move and when you work, God, we want to be able to recognize when you reveal yourself to us. If you need God to work on your hard heart, come on, raise a hand in faith. God, take away my hard heart. All the things that have caused me to put up walls and things towards you, God. Help me to be able to see the loaves. Let me see and recognize that you are God, that you're always trying to reveal yourself to me, and I won't turn away anymore. Thank you, Jesus. God, I pray over this congregation, God, that you will use us to go out into a dying world and break bread and multiply and bring hope and bring peace into our lives, into our communities. We love you, we praise you, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. And before we leave, maybe you're here and you've come to the way a couple of times or this is your first time and you would love to join us and be a part of this church home. If you're here today and you would like to join the way formerly, Come on down, we'd love to have you.